What's your favorite value play tonight? There are a couple of good ones in the Grizzlies game. Uh, Desmond Bain and Dylan Brooks are both in that 6K range. That could be decent options. But I actually like Brandon Clark. He's under 5K, listed at 4,700 right now. 13 points, 7.5 rebounds in the last two games uh, as his average, 25 minutes a game. And the Grizzlies have learned that Steven Adams basically cannot take the floor for extended minutes against Carl Anthony Towns. So Jenkins, uh, the head coach there, has learned that that Adams is not going to be an option, which means that Brandon Clark is, is due for extended minutes once again. So I like him as the value play under 5K. But if you do have the money to spend up, Bain and Brooks are probably going to deliver more upside uh, as, as starters who get heavy minutes for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Clark has surpassed the season average of minutes too in both games of this series. Maddie, what do you want to do in the value department? I'm glad Chinmay brought this situation up because this is where I'm looking to. And unfortunately, I thought Steven Adams was a good play last game. Certainly can't go back there. Um, I, I, maybe I'm stretching the rules again a little bit, but Jaron Jackson at 6,300, I think he's sort of a value play. I don't think his fantasy projections are going to look all that good, but Clark makes sense. He's cheaper, and I think a lot of people will play him. I think a decent amount of the field will play Xavier Tillman, who stepped up when Adams went out last game. Jaron Jackson has a ton of upside as a fantasy player. He just always gets in foul trouble. And for tournaments, if you can just get a game where he doesn't get in foul trouble, we're, we're seeing that Adams is getting run off the court in this series. So there could be parts of the game where Jackson's actually playing center and the fouls are going to be a concern. Like if you roster him, don't watch because he's probably going to pick up fouls. It's going to be very <laughs> frustrating. But I think that there's a lot of upside for that $6,300 price tag. And I don't think too many people are going to play him. Yeah, and Jackson can put up monster numbers too, Matt, on the defensive end, like when he blocks seven shots uh, in game one. Uh, Gary, and who do you want as your value play tonight? You got a top guy? Yeah, I think we've all kind of identified the exact same positional group in the same game. Um, I think both coaches have as well as these guys were talking about. I mean, this isn't really a series where Steven Adams or Nas Reed have been all that involved, at least on a consistent basis. Uh, so I think you start looking at guys that they've already mentioned, and even someone like Jaden McDaniels, who is $3,600. He's played over 20 minutes in both of the uh, first two games of this series. And really, we, we saw the highs and the lows with McDaniels. He had 34 DraftKings points in game one, then nine DraftKings points in game two, but that really just came down to shooting variance. I mean, I think more than likely, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And if you're looking at 20 to 25 DraftKings points for someone who is just $3,600, again, playing in by far the best environment on this slate, I think that's a pretty good direction to go. If you do want someone who's playing in a different game, um, I think like, Gary Payton, the third, uh, pretty locked into like 20 minutes is less than $3,500. Uh, even like Nemanja Bialica also seems like he's locked into about 20 minutes for the Warriors. So there are other places to go, but I, I do think spamming this particular Memphis, uh, Memphis, Minnesota game is, is probably the best course of action.